We do have a halfling house here that's going to keep spawning halflings to go with them, but since I only have blues over here, I am not going to try to take it out. I'm just going to fight the halflings myself long enough for the blues to get the bridge created. And then we're going to be able to go back and use that bridge to get all of our minions across. So here's the rest of our forces. And now we'll take the browns over there and wipe out that halfling house. First we're going to go ahead and let our reds start clearing this fire. And while they're doing that, we'll go ahead and take out the halflings. Now we don't have to worry about them coming up from behind us anymore. And we would have just been standing here waiting for the Reds to finish clearing out the fire until just now anyway. Uh, that was actually timed pretty much perfectly. And then looking at my clock, I have gone over the time, so I'm going to be just playing straight through for 20 minutes and then finding a good place to cut the videos so I will not have put an ending onto the last video. But we'll just break this up into two and sign off at the end of that. It's the tormented spirit of Melvin, sire. Looks like he's getting all the food he could ever wish for down here. All that flesh wobbling from side to side. Oh, it's almost hypnotic. Oh, this should be interesting. <laughs> That's the way to end a meal. Oh, there he goes again. Blowing up and reincarnating like that must hurt like <laughs> hell. Ha! But look at him. Melvin just can't seem to stop himself. And I think they should have given you just a little bit more of a clue of what they're trying to give you a clue towards in that room. From where there are three plates in front of him, and then he blows up. They are trying to show you that it's when he eats his third plate of food that he explodes. Because what we end up having to do is we're going to try to need to use him to explode to remove barriers for us that we need to deal with. All this food just lying about. And we have control of the order he eats them because there's switches beside each of the Lord, plates of food. That wobbly ball of lard might prove handy here. That is, if you can make use of his fatal bouts of indigestion. <laughs> and this first time through, we're going to let him eat them in the order he would want to eat them in. He is completely invincible. I cannot attack him and get anything accomplished. <laughs> And we're just going to fight off the half ones that are coming from those houses. While we let Melvin, he eats that plate of food, and now he's moving down the hill. And down at the bottom of the hill, he's going to go over and eat a plate of food that's over there near that giant pumpkin. And you need to be very careful in this area. All of those weeds over there are a good way for you to be able to kill a handful of halflings at once, but not only does your fire spell set them off, but your reds throwing their fire can do so also. So if you just went down in there and said, I'm not going to use my fire, I'll let my browns fight the halflings like normal, unfortunately once your reds throw a fireball, they're going to wipe out not only all of the halflings, but all of your own people also. And so he just ate his third plate of food, 
is going to explode over there. That does go ahead and set off all of those plants. The other thing it does is it puts a fire barrier in front of both of the halfling houses that are in that area. So while the halflings are still spawning, as soon as they step out of the door, they catch fire and fall over dead eventually. So the key to this area is that you're actually wanting him to blow up when he eats this plate of food over here. That's what's being spawning those pumpkins. So be careful, sire. That's one big mother. Because when he explodes over here, he'll tear down this wall and you'll be able to continue on through. So you want to get to the switch that would raise that plate of food up where he can't reach it. It's back in behind these pumpkins. Many of those are going to come to life and attack you. And they're going to constantly keep spawning. Even my person that was ready to beat the game was not able to fight his way through them and get to the switch just by fighting through them. The key is you actually have to come up here and use this bridge to wipe out the big pumpkin. Once you wipe him out, while you still have to fight all of the ones that are down there, they don't keep respawning. There's just that group of them. But they are a tight enough group that I suspect they could still give me a decent bit of problems unless I can get them to spread out some. So I'm going to do my best to get them to split off into smaller groups and come at me in a handful at a time. Go ahead and bust it open and then pull back. And deal with just these ones that have come forward already. going pretty well so far. I don't know how many more of those are still ones that are going to come to life, so we're still going to be real cautious as to how quickly we go in. Still quite a few, so I'm glad I did go cautiously. In fact, I, even on this last little group, went in a little too quickly, and they're going to have lost a decent handful. The blues are going to have saved a few of the ones that I lost. Yeah, I ended up losing five permanently. And I will show you one other thing that can make this area a little tricky and make you do it an extra time. We go ahead and flip the switch. It raises that plate of food up. But when we respawn Melvin to start the sequence, it respawns the food plates also. And it does respawn that as down again. So I am going to have to specifically come and raise it again. If you just raised it like I did and then assumed you were ready, he could end up eating them in the same order and... and it's not a big deal, it just wastes the time of having to go through watching him eat all three plates again. But it is at least a little bit of a hassle. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. That means that each of these last two parts may be a little bit short, but I do need to give myself a little bit of leeway to make sure I can pick a good place to stop the last video instead of just having to cut it at this exact point. Uh, you know, right at the halfway mark because that's the only way it will fit as two videos. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and let Melvin blow open that wall for us and continue through and see if we can go ahead and finish up the expansion area.